It's hard to believe that the original RME ADI2 Pro was released in 2016, and seven years later, there is no competitor yet to release a product that includes a DAC, headphone amp, remote, 20 configurable parametric EQs, all configurable from an LCD interface. Army has since released Windows Mac software to take the annoyance of the interface out of the equation. But at a cost of $1,249, it's not in the reach of all users. So here comes Fio with the K9, taking a shot at ADI2FS with a product at less than half the price, a balanced headphone outputs, and parametric EQ. RMA thinks their competitors look like this. I'd strongly recommend RME wake up quick, because while the K9 is only a warning shot, the writing is on the wall that FIO is catching up. Incremental iterations since 2016 have kept the RME ahead, but their lead is shrinking fast. No longer is Fio a slow turtle, and no longer can RME sit on their laurels. As an audiophile reviewer, I have three reference systems, home theater, hi-fi, and desktop. The RME ADI2 sits squarely in my desktop reference system, and I've found nothing that compares to it in sound quality and features. Fio wants the scientific audiophile, the mantle of its reference DAC amp, to be the K9. And at the rate they've begun to develop sounding more feature-rich DAC amps, it may not be much longer until FIO is sitting on my desktop reference system. But it's not going to be the K9. Now, before you think I'm gushing all over the K9 like a schoolgirl crush, there are reasons why the K9 is not replacing my ADI-2. So let's go over the K9 misses. No remote control. Once you eliminate the remote, you are only a desktop product because fat, lazy men like me don't want to get up and turn on the power. And we're just conscious enough about saving a buck or saving the environment that we don't want to leave it on 24 seven. The ADI-2 can definitely serve in a standalone hi-fi system, but the K9, at least for me, cannot. The control app, Sans Remote, Fio has a control app which can't turn on the power, but can switch inputs and do most everything else. Since I'm already using my phone to find music and playlists, I'm not really keen on switching apps just to raise or lower the volume when a great toe-tapping Diane Bish song comes on. I want a remote in the palm of my hand to crank the volume and also mute the volume instantly if my meth dealer comes. Sure, you could set the K9 to low output, hook it up to an amp, and use the amplifier's remote, but you can't switch to headphone output using the control app. That requires you to physically switch the output setting to the PO. So the control app is only a partial remote and you still need to be sitting within arm's distance to use the K9 features. Parametric EQ. You need to use the FIO control app to play around with the PEQ, which in and of itself isn't a burden. The burden is that the PEQ only works with the Bluetooth input, which is a major letdown considering you have USB, optical, coax, that cannot partake in the PEQ's party. Worse yet, there are only three custom PEQs, not 20 like on the RME, and they can't be named, which I would have expected on the app. Wouldn't it be nice instead of remember that custom two is for your Focal headphones, you could just rename it Focal? That's a rhetorical question. Now let's get to the hits. But first, anyone who stayed away from the K9 because you read this review on Tech Power by VSG, which stated, I will, however, complain to FIO here since it claims to provide PEQ, but really this is just a graphical EQ since we don't have any control over the frequency or Q factor outside of the set 10 band EQ and the various presets on offer. This is not PEQ and claiming that the K9 supports it is misleading to the end user. You should know that that is not true. It is possible when VSG wrote this article, the option for true PEQ didn't exist but I can confirm that in my testing with the latest FIO control software, there is a true 10 band PEQ.
So if you want to give a 3 dB bump with a high Q factor of 5 to deal with an issue your speaker or headphone have at 200 Hz, you just need to modify one of the default frequency settings. I will repeat, it is annoying that the EQ only works for the Bluetooth input. But it's also annoying that it only works in a phone app. The lack of Windows Mac software is annoying for what is almost definitely a desktop product. It sure isn't portable, and it most likely won't be used in a hi-fi rig. So playing around with your phone to change settings while you're already on the computer is annoying. Yes, viewer, this is the part of the video called hits. So while the PEQ is a hit, its full implementation is a miss. But let's get back to the hits. The balanced headphone outputs. Not only is the 4.4 millimeter balanced output included, but they include a nice panel. You take that little panel off and you've got another balanced input. But what do you do with the little round cover? It would be nice if there was like a little compartment built into the unit where you could store it. Otherwise, you just might lose it. Switching from headphone to preamp or DAC mode is simple and far, far better than the K11, which requires you to enter the menu to make changes. Which brings me to the point, there isn't really a menu on the K9. It uses lights to let you know if you're getting an input. For example, cyan is less than 48 kilohertz. Yellow is greater than 48 kilohertz sampling rate. Green is DSD format. Red is the unit is overheating. The colors are a cop-out on putting together an LCD screen showing you exactly what the unit is receiving. Worse yet, it reminds me of the dumb American government idea of color coding the terror alerts. Overall, I much prefer a desktop product to have easily accessible buttons to do the basics. Switch output modes, switch inputs, control the volume. As I often need to switch modes quickly, like when I'm listening to a headphone and then I need to have a professional meeting with the president. Fumbling around with a menu isn't my thing. The K9's DAC is transparent. I know every reviewer on the internet wants to tell you that the DAC and the K9 is really good, but it's a smidge less open and dynamic than the K9 Pro. But they're full of it. It's also as good as my ADI too. I know because I hooked them both up to my computer and output the sound directly to my AS2100 amplifier using the balanced outputs. And with no EQ set on either unit, I couldn't hear the difference after two hours of A being the two. Oh sure, someone is going to say, I need a $15,000 amplifier, not a $3,000 one to be a true test. Or my $8,000 speakers need to be upgraded to a $20,000 pair to make an honest comparison. But sadly, these people don't understand that DACs today have gotten to the point where most are just plain transparent. And what you really are looking for are features and price. The K9's balanced amplifier is good but in medium gain mode, I cranked up Speak To Me, the amazing Diane Bish song asking God to speak to her. It has a lot of bass. And it clipped. Not only did it clip, it shut down for a few seconds using the 6.35 millimeter jack on my Aeon 2s. It did not clip in low gain mode, but obviously it didn't get as loud as I wanted it to. In high gain mode, it clipped again, but I lowered the volume so it wouldn't go into shutdown mode. But there's two balanced outputs, so I popped in the Verum once and using the XLR balanced headphone jack and cranked the volume. While louder, it also clipped and shut down in high power mode. The RME in low or in high power mode never clipped and never shut down, even maxed on volume multiple times. As long as I didn't push the K9 to extremes, remember, while both my headphones are easy to drive, they are very low ohm and tough on some amplifiers. The bass pounded through my Aeon 2 open back headphones and bass pounded equally well while testing the Planar Verum 1 headphones. Mid-range and upper frequencies were beautifully flat unless I EQ'd it otherwise and there wasn't a hint of sibilance in the K9 in any filter which can only be changed in the app. But count me disappointed in the clipping of the amp because the K9 promotes its THX AAA 788 Plus amplifier as its ace up its sleeve, promising 2,000 milliwatts into 32 ohms, stating no matter if you use low impedance or high impedance headphones, the K9 will drive it with a plum. 
Well, maybe not 12 or 8 ohm headphones. Or are the Varum ones 7 ohms? Yes, the K9 comes up short against the best, but not in terms of the stack implementation. While the headphone amp sound quality was excellent, clipping was an issue, and some features could use a better interface design. At a $750 discount over the RME ADI-2, it's only $499. It's pretty obvious the rating is going to be a dirty bastard Scottish ale with center cut pork chops, braised in a red wine and garlic sauce, and garnished with fresh rosemary served with roasted potatoes. For those of you who do not currently own the RME ADI-2, who only need a desktop DAC, who have the space, yes, the K9 is a little larger, who don't care about a remote and will be using PEQ through another computer app that can store as many settings as you want, like Equalizer APO, then I can't come up with a single reason not to buy the K9. But for me and those like me, whose parents bought them the ADI2 because they were throwing a hissy fit in the floor of Walmart with 20 people watching, then there is no reason to replace the RME ADI2. That's all for Scientific Audiophile. Have a great day.